Hello and welcome everyone to another North Basics episode on this channel. Uh, today it's gonna be about the Goat Clan. So the last clan in the little row there. Uh, I really hope you enjoy this video and uh, even though that I think that the Goat Clan is gonna have a little rework here, I'm still gonna release this video and in the worst case I'm just gonna re-upload a new version of it. So have fun while it. The goat clan is definitely one of the economic clans in Northgard because the sheep uh, just boost his economy that much that he can easily be the strongest food producer in whole Northgard so no other clan can even try to compete with the goat clan there uh, because the sheep will just work as a villager for you because the sheep are producing plus free food and are not consuming anything so in the end they are just as good as a villager that is on a field if you see it like that so really crazy production of those sheep and really enjoy to having them from the start what is actually one of the first starting bonuses of the uh, goat clan so you will get two sheep and you will be able to build the sheep fold to actually get the food production from them so that's actually why you want to build the sheep fold as early as possible and if you if you find more sheep on the map you want to build more sheep folds as early as possible it's really that strong uh, if you upgrade the sheep fold you will even get plus 50% more production and not like plus 20% 20, uh, 20 more production like in other buildings. So keep that in mind that this will really boost your eco like crazy if you are able to get uh, 3 or even 4 sheep like I'm gonna explain later into this sheep fold. Uh, they can really run your sh uh, food economy not alone but with these hunters they can really keep up insane army counts without having any problems in food really. Uh, the second bonus is about the feasts, so the goat clan will actually get not cheaper feasts, but he will get a 30%, 30%? No, increases your bonus of your feast to 30%, so usually it would be 20%, I'm quite sure. Mm, the happiness is just like the same, like with any other feast, but you will get plus 30% production instead of uh, plus 20% production. That can be really helpful for the goat clan because the goat clan will naturally feast a lot because of his sheepfold and yeah, food bonuses. So you can make a lot of use uh, for this feast and even your fame bonuses later on go for that feast. But we are just gonna jump into that right now. <laughs> Like I said, let's just jump right into the fame bonuses of the uh, goat clan. That will be the spare tools for hitting fame. So your 200 fame bonus will be a spare tools. You can then upgrade two jobs uh, for free. So uh, I just chose the hunters and the merchants right here since I have a lot of hunt and yeah, merchants are which are always cool to upgrade but oftentimes I will upgrade the uh, woodcutters because in the early game when you hit it in the early game you will most likely uh, want to have a little bit extra wood there and upgrading the woodcutters there for free is really cool but you can really uh, change that around and that's what's make this uh, what's make this fame bonus so good that you can really adapt it for your different situations so whatever you need right now you can upgrade a job there for free and it will help you out quite a lot and at 500 fame you will get team work and you will get a one free feast i think there's not too much to explain about that uh yeah it won't add up to your other feasts anymore so if you have your you feasted already and your next feast would cost 150 and you then get the free feast it won't rise the price of your feasts anymore i'm very sure even though I usually uh, have feasted so often until I got my free feast that uh, I don't really think about feasting then anymore because 500 food for a feast is actually quite a lot. And your defense towers and all your military units will get 20% bonus uh, resistance while you feasted. So that's often the case that I'm outside with my army and hit the uh, 500 fame just before uh, don't use the feast of course just run in with my army and get the resistance bonus while the fight what can really help out a lot i guess there were a lot of fights going on that i just won because of this little resistance bonus for a month because it's actually it's one month that's not a really short time in the battle so it can be a short time but if you manage to pressure your enemy quite a lot you can get him down in a situation where your feast must 
hit you. So your enemy needs to hit while the time where your feast is just going on. And that can be, that can end in quite crucial fights that you just win because of your feast. So really cool effect that can end up really strong. Let's take at the lore of the goat clan and what unique lore he actually has. So uh, he has cooking mastery as first that will reduce your food consumption by 5% always. So 5% is not that much but uh, just always that is quite good. So in the later stages of the game this can really help you out. Uh, industrious uh, food uh, producing buildings can be assigned an additional villager if they are upgraded so that is actually the point where the four uh, goat yeah four goat <laughs> the four sheep sheep fold will happen and the four hunter slot uh, four hunter and a hunter slot can actually easily keep your economy up and uh, yeah when you have four farmers and they're even more and I think even four fishers can do quite a lot then for you because just having that much uh, food economy, just a one tile, even upgraded by a silo, that is really crazy and can, yeah, you can just sustain insane army counts that other players, uh, yeah, won't understand if they don't know the power of the goat clan. Um, Yep, da -da -da -da, just gonna click anything. Bang, why not that? The next one we're going for. Uh, it's barricades. Increases your civilian's resistance by 20% per building in the area. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Could develop it and still put another building on it. That wouldn't be a problem. So, just right here, we would have plus 100% production uh, resistance for my. Uh, villagers, I'm not very sure if it exactly works like that. So, if the tower counts or not, because, yeah. I don't quite know, but just right now it doesn't look like it, so it looks like the tower doesn't count. But um, it's still really strong and I enjoy this, uh, yeah, <laughs> this effect quite a lot because you can do a quite uh, economical play, just fall back a little bit and your villager defense can be just that devastating strong. You just need to watch out that your villagers, uh, yeah, villager count stays quite high there. And when you combine it with no, not possible. That's really good. I'm happy that this didn't happen. But for some time it were uh, in the yeah it were. I didn't think it actually got into the game that they talked about doing defensive strategy in here, but that didn't happen. And I'm really uh, happy about this because this would make the goat villagers really in tanks with uh, that can actually kill quite a lot then. Uh, next we have amenities, the 80% reduction to add a building slot in an area. So this, mm, yeah, if you're a goat, you can make quite a lot uh, use of that. I actually can't right now because I developed everything, of course, I'm sure. Back. Yeah, I developed ev everything already. So um, not too big of a problem, but you can really develop a lot of areas very early because you will usually go the way like... Um, I don't know if you usually will go that way, but I usually go the way that I go trading, amenities, carpentry mastery, and that's my start with the goat clan. Then mostly sharp axes, and then I look from uh, what do I do from that point on. A food trade can be really strong if you find some uh, neutrals to trade with, but trading food with the goat clan is at any case pretty strong because he just has so much of it. And if you just would decide to build more and more food buildings, you would just get more and more, uh, yeah, food flowing in. And you don't, I don't actually know what to do with all this food with goats. So you need to find a way how to really uh, get this gold into go, uh, this food into gold, so you can set up the army. And having some trade routes there can really help you out. Ba bang! Yeah, see, just just being a nice enemy here. And uh, yeah, the bird actually it with the tree and yeah, if you go for a defensive play, then you of course will go for uh, barricades. Then usually go for carpentry mastery, sharp access barricades maybe if you feel like you get aggressed. But <coughs> it's gonna hit quite late then anyways. So sometimes you will even need to go a little bit earlier for barricades, even though that I think you need to go the carpentry mastery way. You can't really go around it, so it can only just be the fifth fifth lore mm. could be quite late for it but it needs to be manual and eco clan and uh, sometimes you can even go for industrious uh, 
directly i don't like it all too much because i would always say like go for the trading first but industrious is quite strong and can really help you out in quite some games i just always felt like carpentry mastery is so needed for me and the amenities is really helpful for the goat clan so before amenities that's um the goat clan had amenities that reachable i had some problems playing them because at some point it were like it was stuck and you needed like army to way of your way out but it really didn't felt good with the goat clan and just having the 20 gold to pick here amenities amenities helps them out so much it makes them so much better to play i really enjoy playing good right now <laughs> let's come to the conclusion of the goat clan so the goat clan is one of the strongest economy clans in the game uh, definitely the strongest uh, clan when it comes to food uh, so if you want to have a feaster in your uh, team game so just think about getting a goat for you uh, even though there are really uh, aggressive strategies in team games out right now where the goat can really excel from the uh, sheeps that he has that's why i actually think that it's going to be nerfed in the next time because this is really 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 strong what the goat gets here from the first minutes in the game and they may be gonna nerf it a little bit or even gonna uh, delay it way harder by putting it into some lures i'm not sure about that but i am sure that the goat clan like we know it right now with just getting the sheepfold down as early as possible will at least change a little bit how you might know it and i think it should be the right thing because just food wise uh, there are just two crazy things you can make happen just because of these few sheep here and if you actually happen to find two bonus sheep at the start so you have four sheep at the start it's just like four farmers working for you bonus without getting yeah without eating yeah and it's not like without eating something that's quite wrong just like farmers just like a normal farmer that's a sheep and yeah just having four farmers bonus on top of all the other things that the goat clan can do quite good with the amenities and everything so a little nerf there would be not too bad to be honest but i enjoy it just like it is right now and i hope you do enjoy it too <laughs> so that were the enough basics about the goat clan i really hope you enjoyed it if you did so please leave a thumb here if you want so and um yeah let's see if the goat clan actually gets nerfed in the next time i would actually say so maybe write down in the comments what you think about the goat clan if you think it's too overpowered right now or do you think it's just like normal and you wouldn't really change anything and yeah have a great day everyone and see you back in the next video so bye bye <laughs> ciao